All right. So for a long time, I've been trying to get wanted to read any book that I've read <laughs> because I read a lot of different books and I always feel like I want someone to talk to about talk to it talk about it with English second language. <laughs> <laughs> So I finally got him to look at Kindred. I think he actually got interested from looking at the summary of the book. Is that what happened? I heard a summary on YouTube, actually, and I read something that sparked my interest. Yeah, so that was good because I hadn't read that book yet either. And I do plan on reading all her books at some point. Actually, you didn't want so, to read this book at all. Yeah, I didn't want to read this. I mean, I was going to read this one like the last. This was going to be the last book of hers I read because I was like... I feel like this book gonna trigger me, you know. Like I feel like it's gonna spark something in me that gonna just make me angry and like ruin my day. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to read it. But then, when you was like, "I'm going to read it," I was like, <laughs> "Okay, fine. I'm gonna read it just because I want us to talk about other books. And maybe if I read this one with you, uh -huh. then I could get you to read a different, a next one that's gonna be lighter that I will enjoy more. Uh -huh. So, an investment, you know what I'm saying? But did you end up um, enjoying this one at all? I actually did enjoy it. I actually did. It didn't trigger. I mean, one scene specifically really did trigger me. Uh -huh. But overall, it didn't really like trigger me. It was just like, yeah, this is kind of like what I expected in a way. Uh -huh. Or like, I more viewed it as social commentary. Like she was giving social commentary on the black experience, uh -huh. um, but she was doing it through her writing. Okay. So that's kind of how I viewed it. So. I think we should give a a light synopsis of the entire book. All right, what you do your thing. Too much Me, okay. So, because you know, if I do it, <laughs> I'm going to give too much detail. I'm going, I'm going to still give my synopsis, but I'm going to try my best not to spoil. Well, from my point of view, the book is about a young lady. She's about twenty six who goes back in time, randomly to save her great great grandfather who takes consent from her great-great-grandmother. I'm trying not to say the trigger words because there's a lot of trigger warnings here in this episode, and I don't want anybody to feel anyway. But she has to save his life to basically save her own life. So the book takes her through some very challenging times where she has to decide, why am I even doing this at certain times? Like, why am I letting him live when I know what he's going to do? But in order for her to continue on, for her life to continue on, she basically has to do this. It also brings to light things like um, interracial marriage and what the slaves have to go through. And from my point of view, it, it really touched on a lot of different aspects that we still face today. So the most of the questions and topics that we have today are going to be, I feel they're going to branch through time, speaking of back then and to now. And we can still see that change happened. But I have a strong feeling now that I've had before I read the book that the people who were around back then trying to create change, they actually thought change is going to happen. Like, it's going to happen soon. And I feel like if they came to the future today, they'd be like, where is the change? Which is a segue I want to make. And I know I, I sounding like MK right now, but there's a series on CW called the 4400. I don't know if you heard about it. It's where all these disenfranchised, marginalized people from the past come to the future. Give it a look. It's pretty decent. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Sounds interesting. So my synopsis of the book is this lady um, who has white ancestry, um, but who is dark-skinned. I understood that she was dark-skinned. She travels back in time against her will to save his life, to save the life of her great, 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 whatever ancestor he is, um, grandfather. Um, and she goes back like several times, I think like maybe four times. Mm -hmm. um, and each time, well, okay, given too much information, but she goes back <laughs> four times. <laughs> and each time she has to like basically assimilate into slave culture. Mm -hmm. As a person who's from the modern times, who is free. And it's like, kind of like when she went back in time, acting white mm -hmm. um, while being a slave and how that plays into how people treated her, 
um, how much trouble she got into and even how we interacted with her and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I think all of that is part of the story of even modern times. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my synopsis. I think if I say anything else, I don't give too much. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. <laughs> I guess we could start with like the it's like a jarring ish question. Like think about yourself if that was you. How long would you survive in the past, do you think? So if I if I was in her shoes or like just going back to the past? Um, it's just going back to the past. How long would you survive? How long do you think you survive? And like would do you think you know enough about history and about you know, back then to survive and what skills do you think that you would have from now to take back then? And that's why I didn't want to form these questions to be too vague because then it doesn't exp- it doesn't say like when. So Yeah, yeah. Let's say if you I can were... just go I'll go with the time frame that she went back to. Yep, yep, yep. Because I, I was thinking like vague, like, oh man, what if I go back to prehistoric times? Mm-hmm, or what if mm-hmm. I go back to like just when I was born? Yeah. And I was like, eh, that's let's just stick with that because yeah. let's keep the theme as this thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't think I would survive. I think <laughs> I would survive <laughs> for like a day wow. or two. Mm-hmm. No more than a week for sure. Like I, I, either I would survive because I would just assimilate, mm-hmm. like how she had to, or I would die because I would say or do the wrong thing at the to the wrong person at mm-hmm. the wrong time. Yeah. Like she was kind of lucky to who she got sent back to, mm-hmm. but she could have gotten sent back to a slave master who was really evil or just really didn't see slaves as people at all. I mean, these didn't really see that as people per se. They saw them as pe- okay, in my opinion, they saw them as people, but people that would below them, mm-hmm. and people that they had the responsibility of making them behave. That's how I kind of viewed it. Well, the way the book was written, to be fair, she didn't really go back to the adults. She re- went back to a child, and she did she did acts that helped her be more favorable to the adults. So the adults kind of knew. If she's uh, here, yeah, yeah. he's in trouble. Like we kind of need her, but she's still yeah, she's true. still black, so she's still treated like a slave. But overall, that's the true. slaves were treated decently. I agree with you, though. Yeah, his overall his slaves were treated decently. Mm-hmm. Um, like she could have got sent back to a slave master who like literally skinned slaves alive and stuff. And mm-hmm. luckily, she wasn't sent to someone like that. Mm-hmm. So it depends on who I get sent back to. If I get sent back to a slave master who's like that guy in the book. Mm-hmm. I might stand a chance of surviving. Mm-hmm. Granted, I wouldn't have the advantages she had where I saved somebody's life, so now they want to protect me or whatever. Yeah. So I probably would get beat a lot more than she did. Next thing, too, we have to think, and this kind of relates to something else later on that we're going to talk about, which mm-hmm. is colorism, mm-hmm. is that I'm light skin. so maybe I might stand a chance of not having to be out in the fields. I might be inside the house mm-hmm. or in the kitchen or something like that. So I don't know. But I think personally, I don't know enough about history at all. <laughs> like <laughs> if I was trying to escape up north, yeah, I would die in the forest. Like I would <laughs> I can't even hunt. Like <laughs> Oh my gosh. I I would eat the wrong plant, I would drink from the wrong stream. Something. No. So I feel like that's just ignorance. That's not really your fault per se. Yeah. Which is why when I have kids, I gonna make sure that they go into some kind of like Eagle Scouts or something to learn how to do those things, mm-hmm. so I could learn secondhand. And I feel like um, us as a people, we kind of look down. At, not really. Not, I won't say look down on that. We're more shy away from that kind of things, like camping or hunting, and even you know, survival skills. We kind of like we don't really like it. I don't know how to describe it, but you know what I mean. Like you mean black people or mm-hmm, like yeah, humankind? Yeah, they don't do things like they don't enjoy camping and hunting and things like that when it's just like an experience you can have and it'll help you out yeah it's weird that black people don't do those things Mm -hmm. because as you know our white counterparts they do those a lot of a lot of them that i know do those things Mm -hmm. and they do it for fun i think part of it is that we feel like we already have a hard life we don't really want to do (laughs) things that's gonna be hard for fun yeah so I, i can understand why we don't do it but I think we should really think about it a different way, which is these are skills that we have to learn in case Mm -hmm. of something, which is how I think, because I'm a paranoid person, like I need to learn 
these different things in case something happens yeah and i need to survive mm-hmm. but uh yeah i wouldn't survive for long and I, I don't think i would survive for long and i don't know enough about history so that's my answer <laughs> i think i would live until i died probably that's vague well i'm gonna get into it like <laughs> All right. But I would survive, but I'll survive until I died or until they beat me to death. I know I have a smart mouth, so that's already number one. I don't like BS, so that's number two. But I already have a demanding job physically and mentally, so I, I know like the work part wouldn't be that bad. I, and I would definitely be outside, for sure. It's okay, though. It's okay. You gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> but um, I don't know enough about history to be placed in a good place to like survive in the like i don't know where to go i don't know what's a free state i don't know but no north is better but i don't know how to get there what to avoid you know and this book really has some things that that come to the future right i don't have to talk about this now but i'll put a note here that um when the main character was working after some time when she went back another slave told her don't work too hard because then they expect that every day and i was like i got to work all the time <laughs> yes dude you know what that made me think of yo when i was working at subway mm-hmm. bruh when i was working at subway right i would go into like that was my first job like my real first job mm-hmm. like ever in life yeah so i went into work every day working hard and people would be in there working, taking a bunch of breaks, going to smoke, working slow, mm-hmm. doing jobs like not correct. So then they have to redo it over and over again. And I in there like doing everything, like trying to be perfect, mm-hmm. going as fast as I can, all that kind of stuff. And it always like peeved me when my reward was, more okay, work. Fian, here is more work. Like here is <laughs> 10 more tasks for you to do oh, since you man. finished those mm-hmm. previous five. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wait, I have my 50 task and this person is still on his third task. Mm-hmm. How is that fair? Like, y'all ain't paying me more than them. Yeah. Matter of fact, they were making more than me because they've been working there longer. <laughs> y'all not paying me more than them. And you gave me more work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that really reminded me because I don't want to spoil, but can you tell us, like, what happened when, like, why she prompted her to do it? Like, to tell her, like, hey, don't work so hard. The overseer that she had was one that was really hard on people just for no reason. So he would just he would just do things for no reason just to make you work. But even though he was doing that, the slave was like, just just take it because then you have to do more work and then everybody have to come to your standard of work as well. So she was like, oh. And I don't know if it clicked for her. I don't know if these same things that they talked about then happened to her because she had a different kind of job. She didn't have like a a physical and laborious job where you get rewarded for what you did. But yeah, that that was that song to me, I was like, wow. Cause it still happens. Yeah. I think too so I, I read another one of Octavia's books mm-hmm. where she was um a textile person or something. Like she was writing about a textile person. Mm-hmm. And a similar theme came up there as well. Mm-hmm. I honestly think that Octavia puts herself in a lot of these books. For instance, the main character in this book is a is a writer, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Octavia is a writer. Mm-hmm. So in this other book that I'm talking about, the girl. Oh, I actually have the quote. I can read it to my phone. So I actually took a screenshot and sent it to my family, mm-hmm. and I was like, "This is real life right here." Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Where is my favorite uncle at? Oh, there he is. Oh, wait. Maybe I didn't share it. Dang. I posted it on Facebook. But anyway, basically, she was saying that when she worked hard, mm-hmm. like when she worked too fast, other employees got angry at her Yeah. because she was making the raise, she was raising the bar too high. Mm-hmm. But then when she worked too slow, the overseer or her supervisor yeah. would um dock her pay for not getting enough done while everybody else like everybody else would like her like all her other colleagues and stuff would like her mm-hmm. but then her supervisor would get on her back yeah 
And the reverse was true when she worked fast. Her supervisor would love her, but everybody else would get on her. All her colleagues would get on her back. Mm -hmm. And then she was also saying, like, she hadn't even been given a raise in over two years. That's why. So it was like, she don't even know what to do. <laughs> like, it work hard and everybody hate me mm -hmm. and still don't get a raise or work slow and then have my supervisor be on my back and, like, docking my pay and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that fair that drives you to choose either one? Yeah. It kind of reminds me of, like, the carrot and stick approach to how you people do stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that I'll reward you with whatever, but if you do bad, I'll beat you. And I feel like that's what slavery was overall. It was like carrot and stick. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. 